This episode of The Modern Rogue brought to you by Raycon. Go to buyraycon.com slash rogue to get access to Raycon's Black Friday Cyber Monday deals. Thank us later. You will. Or thank us in advance. Thank us now. In oh, fact, wait. you're welcome. What is the longest you've faked something? Oh man, uh, faked having laryngitis in third grade for like four days. Did you really? Yeah, because we were singing a stupid song and I didn't want to sing it in music class. <laughs> what? I faked having one arm for like an ending because the babysitter showed up, I had a big baggy shirt and, and at some point I just got bored and I was like, anyway, I've got two arms. <laughs> oh, by the way. <laughs> what? I'm gonna convince the babysitter I'm an amputee. <laughs> well, you know, it could have been congenital, I mean. Uh, All right, we're going to talk about four people who took faking it way too far. This is from an article at TheModernRogue.com by Eamon Lahiri. And our first one is somebody who took control of U.S. intelligence agencies from his bedroom in the U.K. Basically picked up the phone with a straight face, said, yes, it's me. Hello, the leader of the CIA. Please restore my account. And then they're like, beep, bop, boop. Guess what he has access to? And you know what was even more exciting was his name was Kane Gamble. Yeah. That was this kid's name, 15 years old. It sounds awesome until you realize he looks like evil Peter Parker from the third Spider-Man movie. Oh, God, he does. Doesn't he? <laughs> he's got the coolest name, though. I'm Kane Gamble. And then you see him, and he's got the hair here. You know. <laughs> but yeah, through social engineering, he was able to get access to some of the most powerful people in the United States Intelligence Department. And this is one of those things where once you have access to certain levels of information, it becomes very, e I don't wanna say easy, it becomes easier to act as though that's definitely you because you know things that you're not supposed to know. Yeah, and like so many cons, the hallmark of them is confidence, yes, right? Yes, 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 and we'll talk more about this in a bit. But basically, the guy didn't even do anything interesting with it. He, he took control of people's computers and downloaded a bunch of pornography for, to them, mocked them on Twitter, yeah, did a bunch of teenager crap. Yeah, he posted their uh, personal information online and stuff yeah. like that. I'm sorry, but if you've got people thinking you're the head of the CIA, I've got a list. <laughs> yeah, I know you do. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> All right, so let's talk about Anthony Gignac. I think I'm saying it G right. Gignac? Oh, whatever, if I'm saying it wrong, screw him. He's a piece of garbage anyway. He uh, comes from Colombia by way of Florida and pretended to be a Saudi prince. Yeah, if there's somebody I'm going to impersonate, it's not going to be the Saudis, because I have a feeling those guys are really good about keeping grudges, so. <laughs> this dude did everything from faking diplomatic plates, driving around, constantly talking about the wrath of his father, if anybody crossed him, basically walked around like a spoiled brat, and everyone's like, well, what can you do? He's a prince. He ended up taking out loans, renting out penthouse apartments, uh, getting uh, credit cards with, uh, you know, crazy debt limits. Uh, all of it, like you said, was him saying, if you don't don't give this to me, my father's going to be very furious. We as human beings tend to be more afraid of bad things than excited about opportunities. And a lot of confidence games are all about how like, you're gonna get rich. But in this case, he was just straight up the fear of God put into them basically. That's interesting, because you're right, it is a completely different approach. It's uh, it's not baiting someone with changing their fortunes for the better. It's uh, the stick instead of the carrot. Eventually the law caught up with him, but only after he scammed eight million dollars from 26 people and I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say my guess is that wasn't the complete list oh my god just having the testicular fortitude to pull something like that off So speaking of pure confidence, this guy, Mark Dreyer, he kind of reminds me a little bit of Frank Abagnale, but with like, you know, 10% is awesome. He was a Manhattan attorney who started impersonating other uh, people of wealth and privilege and utilizing their networks to make himself even richer. Yeah, but not, it wasn't like he was a master of disguise. He would just walk into any high rise building, march into the conference room, announce himself as the guy who owns this building or is in charge of this business or whatever. And everybody was like, well, he's got a suit and those big bushy eyebrows. I assume that he must be in charge. And it's it's uh, what you've talked about before, the trappings of authority. He definitely had it. He's walking in there with this suit, like you said. So they thought, oh yes, uh, he is the person who's supposed to be here. And he was telling them that he was like the CEO, that he was their 
boss, people who should know. To put it in perspective, there's a number of things in my stage magic show that people ask how it's done. And I say, well, how would you do it? And then they give some ridiculously simple method. And then there's a pause and they say, but that would be dumb. And whenever they say the words, but that'd be dumb, they are always 100% right on how I did that. So in other words, this dude walks in, he's like, well, I mean, I suppose he could be a total fraud just in a nice suit, walking around, talking as if he owns the place, but that'd be dumb. And guess what? That's exactly what it was. Yeah, he perpetrated all sorts of fraud and his own knowledge of the legal and financial documents of these companies. He was uh, spoofing these documents. He was uh, forging IOUs, uh, corporate letterhead, uh, fabricating entire audits. He stole hundreds of million dollars from 40 different investment firms. To realize just how big this guy was thinking, by the time that he was arrested, he had 250 attorneys on his side. And my guess is an awful lot of them believed in him. I'm gonna guess that this guy didn't serve a day in jail. <laughs> he probably, please tell me he did. I wanna believe in justice. Oh, good news. He got 150 years. Oh, wow, okay. I thought with that many lawyers and that much money, they would have been like you. The Houdini of impersonation. By the way, this article that I'm looking at now comes from the Sydney Morning Herald. Their URL is smh, shakemyhead.com.au. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this last one is pure poetic justice. Walk me through this. Okay, so a guy named Zheng in China uh, some time ago got into an argument with an in-law and ended up murdering the guy. I assume he got arrested, went to jail, and the rest writes itself. Nope, he ran off to some remote uh, province and pretended to be mute for 12 years. Why? So he wouldn't rat on himself. <laughs> so he wouldn't create any inconsistencies in his story, so he said, I'm just not gonna talk this, for 12 years. This is like that meme. It's like, like, can't contradict your story, bro. <laughs> That's right. But here's the best part of this, is after not using his voice for how many years? 15 years? 12 years. 12 without, years. You, you would think, okay, maybe I'm just gonna talk to myself in the closet when nobody's listening or watching. No, he just doesn't talk for 12 years. <laughs> after all of this, number one, he does not get away with it. He does go to jail, but also not using his voice for that long. He lost his voice. Yes. How great is that? Well, they ultimately caught him after 12 years, and so when he finally tried to speak, he realized he couldn't because his vocal cords had <laughs> atrophied. New meme, can't defend yourself without a voice, bro. <laughs> Poetic justice. Oh, that's amazing. Congratulations, Zing. You probably don't have internet. <laughs> so, do you sleep in them yet? No, I'm not quite there yet. You will. I, uh, you. They're beautiful earplugs. You're that make intense. the world go away, and all of your favorite audiobooks, podcasts, short stories, everything, and music, it's all, oh, so good. How are you liking the new E25? Super comfortable, nice and easy. I love the new pillbox design. Stays in my pockets, doesn't take up too much space, holds tons of battery life. There's nothing I don't love about my Raycons. Oh, yeah, and they've got some extra bass in there, because a lot of those uh, earpods don't really have any bass, so it oh, sounds kind of tinny. This is a pretty good point. We should point out that we're talking about earbuds. And they're amazing. They are wireless, <laughs> they go in your ears, they yes. recharge inside of a box. That part's important, sorry. We skipped over that. Best we, part, they're not a bazillion D dollars like all these other ones. They are a fraction of the cost of all of the other leading earpod brands. Uh, they are really comfortable and they sound great. There's no reason to spend all that money to get to the more expensive ones. Here's the important part. Raycons are far and away our favorite wireless earbuds. Go to buyraycon.com slash rogue to get access to Raycon's Black Friday Cyber Monday deals. I can't even tell you how good the deals will be. You'll have to check them out on the site. There is no reason not to do it. This is the device that caused me to shuck free the chains of being tethered with a little cable. Did I get to, did I get to, this is like from I, the mountain? I think they're sold. These Raycons have freed me from my, from the imprisonment. I don't know. You, They're awesome. You, you shed the yoke of wired oppression. <laughs> That's what it is. That's what I meant to say. I like shuck free though. Shucked is good. What do you shucked? So check out our articles on themodernrogue.com. And of course, if you want to support us, patreon.com slash modernrogue. We need every single bit of your dollars. If you want to give them to us and have us grow, we're getting bigger. <laughs>